Trigger warning. Violence and blood. NSFW content. Chapter 17. New sensations. Dash. Dash. Leave Tarashima alone. Did he just say that because they were arguing? Or did Osamu really mean it? I can't believe that after everything he's the only one who's honest with me. It doesn't add up. The city lights of Osaka blur into streaks as the train speeds towards Tokyo. The sound of the rhythmic clatter on the tracks distracts Atsumu from the thoughts that he still can't quite grasp. Thoughts about puzzle pieces that don't fit together at all. Thoughts about someone who might be more dangerous than Atsumu ever imagined. He sits alone in the cabin, leaning his head against the window. He winces at his injuries and then gazes out at the vast expanse of the starry night outside, lost in a labyrinth of reflections. The wounds he has hastily patched up throb with every heartbeat, a dull ache that mirrors the pain deep within him. Atsumu did a sloppy job of treating his wounds. He knows that. It had to be done quickly because he couldn't miss the chance to confront the man who owed him some answers. His muscles are sore, his arms burn, and his ribs ache, but he chokes down the pain. He would say he's been through worse, but he hasn't, at least not physically, because no one has ever managed to get this close to him and cause him this much damage, no one except, Atsumu squeezes his eyes shut and sighs deeply, all of this is a fucking mess, why did Tarashima have a photo of him and Suna, why exactly of this one screwed up situation, did he stalk them, and why didn't either of them notice anything, what was he trying to convince Osamu of, and why does Osamu believe him, none of this makes any sense, was Tarashima trying to manipulate Osamu, convince him that he is no longer needed in an Arizaki, that Atsumu is his replacement, that Suna doesn't love him, they made me doubt, Tsumu, a hell of a lot of times, that's the only thing that would make sense, isn't it, but why would Osamu fall for his schemes, he knows better than that, Osamu despises Yakuza, certainly despises his kidnappers, so why, why should he believe Tarashima, Atsumu can't really grasp it, he remembers the photo that Naraki showed him back then, the one in which Tarashima forced Osamu into a car while he checked his surroundings, did they head to Nagano at that time, how long had Osamu even been there, Atsumu is only now realizing that there are too many things he still has no idea about, on the other hand, is it any different for Osamu, fuck, they really need to talk about this, Atsumu's phone buzzes and snaps him out of his thoughts, he pulls it out of his jacket pocket and checks the message, he sighs when he realizes that it's Osamu texting him, for a moment, Atsumu glances out of the window and watches the passing scenery, he wonders whether he should open the message, whether he should reply to his brother, whether he should just ignore everything and everyone for tonight, then he pulls himself together and remembers that he has just decided that they need to communicate or else whatever this is won't end well at all, so, he sighs again and turns the screen to face him, tapping on it to open the message, text messages between Osamu and Atsumu, I'm so Sorry, didn't want to snap like that. Let's talk. Nah, don't be. It's okay Samu. I'm sorry too. Yeah let's talk. I'll be back tomorrow. Where are you? Atsumu hesitates. If he tells his brother now that he is on his way to confront Tarashima, he'll hear no end of it. Osamu would be furious and that's the last thing Atsumu wants. Aha. So much for communicating. Just needed some time for myself. Don't worry about it. Okay we're good. Yeah, we're good. I'm back in a few hours. Please go catch some sleep. I doubt I'll be able to until you're back but yeah I try. Take care Tsumu. Don't worry about me. Moron. I'll be fine. Sleep well. Love you. For some inexplicable reason. Atsumu doesn't have a good feeling. Dash. Dash. Once in Tokyo. Atsumu makes his way to the location Mian sent him. Only when he gets there does he realize that he actually has no plan at all for what he wants to do. Not that he has ever needed a plan. But. This is different. Because he's in a city where he has no business being and he's about to meet two enemies who can at least keep up with his skills and he's only thinking about Tendo here. Atsumu hasn't the faintest idea of Tarashima's abilities yet. It's a dangerous game. He won't be able to kill them. He knows that. At least not like this. Not with all those wounds. And certainly not when he knows absolutely nothing about his opponent. To be honest, Atsumu doesn't really know why he's even here and why he hasn't told anyone. Because he wants to give Tarashima a warning? Because he wants to take revenge on Tendo for the last time they met? Because fighting and all the pain he carries from it are the only things that still make him feel something? Atsumu doesn't know. What he does know is that he has to find out what's going on with Osamu and Tarashima. He has to find out what Daisho is up to with an Arizaki. It's in the middle of the night when Atsumu's feet carry him to a bar in the center of Tokyo. He takes a deep breath and looks up. Hands shoved in his pockets. It's a small part of a shady building and spread over three floors, with tinted windows providing a moderate view of several private rooms. Atsumu is sure that the second he enters the bar through the main entrance he'll be dealing with some Sweden Adler goons and no, that's the last thing he needs right now. 
He still feels like shit and his wounds are burning, which is technically a good sign because that means they are healing, but still, it hurts like a bitch. Atsumu circles the building and sneaks to the back entrance. He doesn't wait long for one of the employees to take out the trash and smacks him in the neck, knocking him unconscious so he falls into Atsumu's arms. Sorry bud, that's gonna hurt a bit when you wake up, he says. Carefully laying the man aside, he snatches his keys, unlocks the door, and sneaks into the bar. The dim lights help him to move inconspicuously. Instinctively, Atsumu disappears to the third floor. He has no idea whether Tendo and Hiroshima are still here. After all, it's way past 4am and he may have missed them long ago. The number of people around here gives him hope, though. Atsumu pricks up his ears as he reaches the top trying to pick up scraps of conversation and catch Tendo's voice as he passes each private room. At the end of the corridor, he is successful. He stops when he hears the chatter of the man with spiky red hair. Atsumu is absolutely sure this voice belongs to Tendo. He wouldn't mistake it for anyone else. He also overhears another voice and assumes it must be Tarashima's. Behind closed shoji doors, they talk about something that Atsumu can't make sense of. Business. Probably. He is pumped full of adrenaline. His wounds hurt a little less by now, but he can still feel the piercing ache of every single one of them. He breathes softly, shallowly, thinking about what he wants to do now that he's found them, and is eventually ripped from his thoughts when Tendo murmurs. Looks like we have a guest. Atsumu's eyes widen. There is no fucking way could Tendo have heard him. Nah, he didn't make a sound. Atsumu fucking knows how to move around quietly. He's an assassin. He isn't one of the best for nothing. And yet, shit, this bastard really is dangerous. Warily, Atsumu pushes the door aside, stepping into the private room where the two men are seated at a table in the middle of the room. Tendo sitting cross-legged, to rush him arresting his arm on his bent knee. There is a bottle of liquor between them and two empty glasses, ready to be refilled. Maybe they are a little tipsy. That would be good for Atsumu. Mia, Tarashima says. Both of them smirk as he enters the room, and it makes Atsumu sick. You really do share a face with your brother. Isn't that amazing? Atsumu is tense. Maybe coming here wasn't his best idea. Tarashima tilts his head and turns to Tendo, throwing him a sly smile. Tendo licks his lips and plants his palms behind his back, reclining as he eyes Atsumu up and down. He hums contentedly, looking like he's mentally taking the assassin apart piece by piece. Atsumu can't lose sight of him. Have a drink with us, Tarashima suggests. Atsumu's gaze shifts back to him, the tension evident on his face. Nah, he declines. I'm good, bastard. He steps in front of the table and looks down at the two of them. Take a seat. Tarashima offers happily. He pours himself and Tendo some of the liquor. I would be delighted to have a little chat with the brother of my little darling Osamu. Atsumu clenches his jaw. He pauses for a moment, his eyes narrowing as he studies the two men in front of him. Tendo's gaze is steady calculating, while Tarashima seems to revel in the discomfort he's causing. Atsumu eventually decides to sit down, casting a wary glance at Tendo, silently conveying that he won't let his guard down. Tarashima's grin widens as Atsumu takes a seat. Atsumu doesn't return the gesture. The mere mention of Osamu in such a teasing manner stirs a deep anger within him. Atsumu clenches his fists in his pockets, determined to keep his composure. I don't think you have the right to talk about my brother like that. Atsumu finally retorts. His voice laced with restrained anger. Tarashima chuckles lowly, taking a sip of the liquor as he eyes Atsumu over the rim of his glass. Oh, but I think Osamu would disagree. Atsumu's confusion deepens, his brows furrowing. What do you mean? Tarashima smirks. You see, Mia, I wasn't the one torturing your dear brother. In fact, quite the opposite. I did everything I could to make his stay more pleasant. Atsumu's frown deepens, the lines of confusion etched on his face. What the hell are you talking about? You know, it's nice to have an ally when you think you're in hell. You should thank me Atsumu. Really, without me, your brother would probably have died long ago. Tarashima flails his hands around closes his eyes, and nods in complacency. After all, it was me who treated his wounds, who listened to him. Tarashima opens his eyes, his voice now more menacing. Who was there for him when his twin wasn't? What? Bites Atsumu. Do you think you're a saint now? Oh, I didn't say I didn't enjoy some playtime. Tarashima's smirk widens. You can thank my Kumicho, though, for all the delightful bruises and scars on Osamu's body. He did a great job, didn't he? Atsumu wants to skin him alive. He grits his teeth. The surge of anger threatening to consume him. His blood seethes beneath his skin, and he digs his nails into his palms, resisting the overpowering urge to draw his katana and unleash a wave of violence upon Tarashima. Why the hell would you do that? Atsumu demands, his irritation cutting through his words. What's the point of all this? Tarashima chuckles menacingly, a low rumble that echoes in the dimly lit room. His smirk widens as he explains. It's simple, Mia. Our Yakuza wants what every other Yakuza craves. 
Power, money, reputation. And if we bring down Inarizuki, who will dare to retaliate? We'd be untouchable. Atsumu stares into Tarashima's eyes, the pieces of the sinister puzzle falling into place. Tarashima continues, his voice carrying a malevolent certainty. To wipe out a flock of skilled killers, you start at the very core. You take down their most skilled ones first. Lower their temper. Osamu wasn't going to spill Inarizuki's secrets just from being tortured. He's tough. Too tough. He could have endured years of pain and never said a word. So, we needed a different approach. Someone charming. Someone like me. In what world would you be charming? Atsumu retorts. Disdain evident in his voice. In this world, my dear. Tarashima winks. His smugness unrestrained. Isn't it working for you too? Aren't you falling for me? I think I'm rather gonna puke. Atsumu spits out. Tarashima huffs a laugh. Thoroughly amused by Atsumu's irritation, the air in the room thickens with tension, and Tarashima leans back, swirling the liquor in his glass as if savouring the taste of the chaos he has created. You see, Mia, breaking down a skilled assassin requires a certain finesse. Daisho has a talent for dismantling not just the body but also the mind. The key is to make them doubt everything they believe, to shatter the very core of their being. It's an art, really. Atsumu's fists clench tighter, his knuckles turning white. The revelation is a bitter pill to swallow. What? Snaps Atsumu, annoyed and insecure. And you think by convincing him that something is going on between me and Suna, you'll get him to trust you? That he'll turn against us? Sam you can't be manipulated. Oh dear. All I did was sow seeds that are now starting to take root. Tarashima leans forward, his tone turning more serious. And I have to say, the way you're behaving, you couldn't play my cards any better. After all, it almost worked with our dear sooner in months ago, didn't it? To bring him down? Where was it again? Aichi, a dear Mia sent three lovely assassins my way for whatever goddamn reason. Except that this dear Mia wasn't at Sumu but Osamu. Shit, shit. They couldn't have known. Osamu almost had Suna killed. Fuck. Atsumu's world shifts on its axis, the revelation hitting him like a punch to the gut. The pieces of the puzzle rearrange themselves in his mind, forming a picture he never expected. He can't believe what he's hearing. What did you do to him? Atsumu exhales, his voice a low growl. He lifts his gaze, fixing Tarashima with a piercing stare, but the man just smirks sickeningly, reveling in the chaos he's sown. He leans back, his eyes glinting with a malicious satisfaction. Why tell me all of this? Atsumu demands, a mixture of frustration and disbelief in his tone. You can no longer control Samu and you couldn't kill Suna after all. What makes you so confident that this has done you any good? Yes, Mia, yes, you're right. Tarashima chuckles, placing the glass aside as he leans back, his eyes half-lidded. Then he murmurs, but you're here, right? I'm so confident because you're next. Atsumu's eyes widen at the ominous declaration, his mind racing to comprehend the gravity of the situation. Before he can fully process what's happening, Tendo launches an attack from behind. Atsumu instinctively glances to the side and notices the man has vanished from his seat, realizing he's right behind him. In the nick of time, Atsumu pivots around, narrowly evading Tendo's swing. He grabs the Tanto blade, feeling its sharpness cut into his palm. Blood drips down his fingers almost runs down his skin the pressure intense as he throws tendo and the blade aside creating distance between them atsumu shoots up his eyes wide with adrenaline as he breathes heavily trying to make sense of the chaotic situation before he can fully assess the threat tarashima is right behind him atsumu tenses feeling the man smirk into his neck dead men tell no tales mia tarashima's voice drips with malevolence as he murmurs i always adored osamu's pretty crying face i wonder if you're just as beautiful the words are barely out of tarashima's mouth when pain erupts in atsumu's thigh he screams as he feels a dagger bury into his flesh the searing pain shooting through his body his golden eyes blaze with rage his mind clouded by pain and fury acting on pure instinct atsumu grunts kicking to rush him aback, and with a swift motion, he pulls the knife from his thigh, tossing it aside with a clatter, he shouldn't have done that, it will only make the injury worse, but he can't fight with a fucking blade stuck in his thigh, blood soaks at Sumu's pants, staining the fabric as he glares at Tarashima, with the cut in his hand, he pulls out his katana, the blade stained red with his own blood, Atsumu lunges at Tarashima, the rage driving him forward, but he's stopped by a kick to his ribs from Tendo, he smirks sadistically, a broad grin stretching across his face, look who wants to end up six feet under, he taunts, a cruel reference to their previous encounter, Tendo hurls his tanto at Atsumu, but with a swift and practiced motion, Atsumu swings his katana just in time, the clash of blades echoes in the room as Atsumu manages to dodge the attack, the close call making his heart speed, Atsumu feels hazy, his senses overwhelmed by pain and disorientation, the wounds from his previous fight are torn open, the fresh injuries inflicted on him even worse, he knows he can't concentrate, understands that, even with the amount they've been drinking, he's no match for them, 
Panic sets in as he grapples with the dilemma if he runs away, they will chase him. If he stays, they might kill him. The situation isn't the best. Atsumu is ripped out of his thoughts when Tendo grabs his Tanto, ready for the next move. Atsumu, weakened and battered, wields his Katana with great effort, trying to keep him at a distance. Tarashima adds to the onslaught, throwing spikes that cut across Atsumu's right arm and split the skin on his neck threatening to slice through his pulse. He hisses in pain and gets punched in the face by Tendo. Stumbling back, Atsumu blinks through the ache and struggles to regain focus. His vision is blurry, his body momentarily too stunned to obey him. Despite his efforts, he's not quick enough. Tendo launches more attacks, and Atsumu manages to parry most of them, but his strength wanes. His legs give out at some point, and he crumples to the ground. His leg feels numb. He gets dizzy. Shit. How much blood did he actually lose? Everything hurts. Burns twists, and turns. The world becomes a hazy nightmare. Voices are muffled. Ringing tinnitus infiltrates his ears, and Atsumu can barely make sense of the chaos around him. A hand fists into his collar, yanking him back up. Tendo smirks sickly at his struggle, enjoying the pain he inflicts. He tilts his head, grinning brightly. Hey, Mia, don't you die. I'm not bored yet. We can play a little longer. He thrusts his Tanto into the same spot where Tarashima's dagger had been lodged in Atsumu's thigh moments before. A tortured cry escapes Atsumu's lips, beads of sweat forming on his forehead. The world blurs further. His eyelids get heavy. Ah, shit. Guess this isn't good. Everything from here on is chopped off. Atsumu feels himself falling to the ground, his eyes closing and reopening in a painful rhythm. He has no idea if he has ever been in such pain. It's almost unbearable. It's the only thing he can still perceive. The floor is incredibly cold and at the same time, his body feels like it's burning up. Atsumu swims in and out of darkness. He's exhausted completely drained, as if the adrenaline had kept him going until it was too much, and now he's collapsing, it's over, right, this is it, the next thing Atsumu realizes is that he's lifted up, arching his brows and groaning in pain as two strong arms carry him as gently as possible, his muscles are limp, everything fucking hurts, can't they just kill him, god, how did Osamu survive this for two damn years, is he the one getting kidnapped now, why didn't he tell anyone where he was going, Atsumu forces his eyes to open, but everything remains blurry, he blinks repeatedly and his breath hitches as he stares into the face of the man carrying him, Atsumu brings his bloody hand to the man's cheek, his heart pounding hard, he thinks, but it doesn't matter, it's over, isn't it, it's over, otherwise he wouldn't be here, it must be what they call the afterlife, Atsumu has been close enough in the last few days and weeks, maybe they'll finally let him go now, why else would he be here again when Atsumu has so clearly lost, everything hurts, he's in pain, he wants to sleep, his hand slips from that man's skin as his arm goes limp too, everything is black, Atsumu is out, is this a dream? Only an x-ray will tell us for sure if any ribs are broken. You know that I can't take him to a hospital. Then let's just hope they aren't. If they are, the fractures are mild and there isn't much to be done except wait for them to heal. A pause. That was a very close call. Kiyumi. Are you okay? No answer. It's dark. Kiyumi, dash, dash, there's a hand on Atsumu's cheek, a kiss on his forehead, a warmth he wants to embrace and never let go, oh, it feels nice, dash, dash, a sigh, stop being so reckless, it's a whisper that tickles his lips, Atsumu wants to wake up, but he can't, he feels high, dash, dash, Atsumu feels someone wrapping something around his arm, it's blindingly bright, so bright that it stings his head, Onyx eyes meet his own and Atsumu realizes his hand is weakly gripping that of the man, it must be another shred of a dream, are you really here, his voice is barely above a whisper, black, dash, dash, his eyes flutter open again to the soothing symphony of raindrops tapping against windows, the room is shrouded in darkness, illuminated only by the soft glow of distant city lights filtering through the sheer curtains, the rhythmic patter of rain creates a tranquil ambience, and Atsumu lies still for a moment, taking in the hazy atmosphere, as his vision adjusts to the dim light, he spots a figure seated across from him, a man, draped in the shadows, naps in an armchair, Atsumu blinks, trying to bring clarity to the silhouette, the man's arms are crossed in front of his chest, and his head hangs to the side, a furrowed brow giving away the discomfort of his makeshift slumber, the sleeves of his dark turtleneck sweater are rolled up, and ink curls around one of his arms, in the dimness, everything seems strangely familiar to Atsumu, there's a sense of deja vu, a memory on the tip of his consciousness, the details are hazy, blurry, like trying to recall a dream upon waking, deciding not to disturb the figure, Atsumu allows his eyes to drift shut again, the room remains enveloped in the soothing sounds of rain, lulling him back into a state of drowsy surrender, the silhouette in the armchair becomes a mere backdrop to the night, and as Atsumu succumbs to the gentle pull of sleep, Everything lingers in the recesses of his subconscious. Dash. Dash. This time he is awake. He surely feels groggy. Worn out. Clears his throat to somehow get rid of the desert stuck in it. But holy shit. That hurts. 
Hell. Breathing hurts. Atsumu blinks several times until he understands where he is and why he is not a ball of light floating around in some supernatural world. He props himself up with much effort, gritting his teeth against the pain that surges through his body. Surprisingly, it's not as bad as he thought it would be. Leaning back against a pile of pillows, he takes a moment to survey the aftermath. Patches and bandages adorn his body, wrapping around his thigh and arm. His body has been washed. There are no traces of blood on his skin. Most of his injuries have transformed into nasty but harmless bruises, leaving him to wonder how much time has passed ever since he lost consciousness. He notices the strange weight of an IV on his hand, shuddering at the thought of a needle piercing his skin. An odd headache throbs in the front of his head, and his ribs feel somewhat sore, but it's not as excruciating as expected, probably thanks to all the morphine being pumped into his veins. Atsumu turns his head, spotting a bottle of water on the bedside table. He grabs it and manages a few gulps, the liquid soothing the burning sensation in his throat. Then, he puts the bottle back on the table, leans back against the pile of pillows, and sighs. It's only now that he realizes he's in Kiyumi's bedroom. The realization hits him like a 20-pound sledgehammer. Kiyumi must have saved him. Ah, shit. The figure seated across from him during his hazy moments. The man carrying him from his battlefield to the sweet gates of safety. All of this wasn't a dream. It was real. It is real. Kiyumi is here. Kiyumi is here. Atsumu's eyes widen. His heart throbs. He carefully pulls the IV from his hand, his breath catching at the stinging pain. He watches the needle leave his skin, trying not to vomit as he completes the task. Once it's done, he pauses for a moment, taking deep breaths to regain his composure. Fuck. He really really hates needles. Atsumu swings his legs to the ground and winces as pain radiates from his thigh, shooting through his entire body like jolts of electricity. The sensation is gut-wrenching and awful to endure. It stings. Fucking hurts like no physical injury ever did before. Atsumu will paint the walls crimson with the remains of Terashima and Tendo once he has regained his full strength. On the armchair where Kiyumi probably sat a few nights prior, Atsumu finds neatly folded fresh clothes. The last rays of sunlight filter through the window, prompting Atsumu to wonder how long he has been out. Days. Probably, if not, a whole week. He changes into the fresh clothes with deliberate slowness, each movement accompanied by a twinge of discomfort. He tries to calm his heart several times and is immediately overwhelmed by how much the fabric smells of Kiyumi. He grabs a fistful of his shirt and brings it up to his nose, inhaling the scent deeply and letting it fog his mind. Atsumu exhales shakily. He can't even put into words how much he has missed him. It stings. Once dressed, he creeps his way out of the bedroom. The living room bathed in the low hum of a TV and the sizzle of food being fried in the nearby kitchen. He clings to the wall as he makes his way inside, stopping dead in his tracks when he spots the man that he has longed for what felt like an eternity, far too long. In an instant, his heart falls into the pit of his stomach. And yes, of course, Kiyumi is still a sight to behold. His silhouette is defined against the soft glow of Tokyo's city lights filtering through the windows. The strong lines of his shoulders and the gentle curve of his spine create a captivating image. The sleeves of his black buttoned down are rolled up to his elbows and the fit of his slacks leave little to no imagination. His dark hair is slightly disheveled and god. Atsumu could swear he has become even more beautiful. He's focused on cooking, oblivious to Atsumu's presence. Or so Atsumu thinks. He sees Kiyumi and all the emotions he's been suppressing come crashing down on him. A wave of happiness. Relief. Longing. And too many more feelings that threaten to drown him. His eyes sting. Red rimmed from all that transpired. His heart pounds hard. He's yearning for his touch. To hold and kiss him. To remain in his arms and forget the rest of the world. But the thought twists his gut because he knows they're not in a place where such displays of affection are acceptable. Even within arm's length. He feels so out of reach, the distance between them heavy on Atsumu's shoulder, even more so, heavy in his heart, it pounds hard in his chest, and for a fleeting moment, he hopes they can forget everything that broke them apart, for this split second he wishes Kiyumi feels the same way, perhaps missed him a little too, would kiss him and hold him and tell him that everything's alright, that they are alright, and nothing and no one will break them apart anymore, but that's not how it works, is it? Kiyumi hates him and will kill him himself. Isn't that how it is? The thought of denying him his sweet revenge feels foreign. You're awake. Kiyumi murmurs and Atsumu halts. Kiyumi turns around with two bowls in his hands. Placing them on the kitchen island across from the stove where he's standing. God, has he always been this breathtaking? Atsumu missed him. He's overwhelmed just by his appearance alone. He's never seen anyone so beautiful. And it pains him to notice the fatigue, the tiredness in his features, the exhaustion etched into his face. Atsumu wonders if this weariness is somehow his fault. Wonders if Kiyumi feels even a little like he does. Did he get enough sleep? Sit down. Eat. Kiyumi gestures to the bowls, then he mumbles, not looking at Atsumu, you've lost weight, Atsumu's stomach churns, appetite dulled due to a single look at how poorly Kiyumi is doing, 
He wants to say so many things, but he can't get a single word past his lips. He wants to apologize, but no apology would even come close to conveying how sorry he is. He wants to tell Kayumi what he feels for him, what he has felt for him all this time and still does, but no words feel right, no time feels appropriate. He can't even look him in the eye. So Atsumu just nods and remains silent, makes his way carefully to the counter, and sits down. A gulp lodges in his throat, his heart beating rapidly. He is nervous, incredibly so, and his stomach keeps slumping down, leaving a weird feeling behind. Kayumi sits across from him, handing over a pair of chopsticks. Their fingers brush against each other and Atsumu's breath hitched. His face flushed. Shivers run down his spine. This isn't enough. They both eat in silence. Atsumu glances up occasionally, only to find Kayumi's gaze fixed on the food before him. It tastes good, amazing even. And Atsumu realizes it's the first time in a while that he can truly savor a meal. It's not that Osamu's food isn't good. Hell, he's probably the best cook in this whole damn world. Lately, though, Atsumu just hasn't felt like eating, hasn't felt like doing much of anything at all. To be honest, the reason for this, perhaps one look ahead would answer all the troubled feelings that have been drowning him. Ah, and then it suddenly dawns on him. He and Osamu were supposed to meet, to talk, to clear things up. Atsumu's movements freeze, and his gaze snaps up. He's been out for who knows how long, and Osamu must be worried sick. Oh, this isn't good. This is actually pretty bad. The abrupt shift in Atsumu's demeanor catches Kayumi's attention, and their eyes lock. Atsumu wonders how long he's been unconscious, his worry reflecting in his eyes. Ah. Kayumi says as if reading his mind. Don't worry. I called Suna-san and explained the situation. Oh. Atsumu's mouth snaps shut and all he can do is stare at Kayumi, wondering what exactly this situation is. Kayumi didn't need Atsumu to voice his concern. He just understood. Maybe, even after all this time, Kayumi can still do that. Atsumu nods slowly and mumbles a small thanks. He traces Kayumi's movements as they finish their meal in silence, the room gradually dimming with the fading sunlight. The air is filled with a quiet tension, broken only by the clatter of chopsticks against ceramic. The room outside turns into a canvas of dusky hues, a backdrop to the complex emotions swirling within Atsumu. When Kayumi gets up and takes their bowls to the sink, Atsumu rises too. Let me help. He says because it's the least he can do, but Kayumi shakes his head. No, he refuses. Wait on the couch. He instructs then, his voice carrying a quiet reassurance. I'll treat your wounds once I'm done. Atsumu stares at him for a bit but doesn't protest, only whispering a small and defeated okay. As he sits on the arm of the couch, confusion swells through him. His feelings run wild. The guilt weighing him down feels impossible to shake off. Atsumu doesn't think he deserves the way Kayumi is treating him. He surely doesn't deserve the kindness Kayumi is showing him. Hell, no. Kayumi should be furious, livid, yelling at Atsumu. Shit, he's supposed to kill him, isn't he? They are supposed to kill each other, yet, here he is, acting like the sweetest guy on earth. Like he wasn't betrayed by the very man who spent nights in his bed. It just doesn't add up. He moves efficiently around the kitchen, the clinking of dishes and the running of water providing a soothing background. The air is thick with unsaid words, with Atsumu trying to decipher Kayumi's unreadable expression. Kayumi finally turns off the faucet and takes off his gloves. He washes his hands and dries them before approaching Atsumu, a first aid kit in tow. He stands in front of him, and their eyes meet, a silent exchange of unspoken feelings. Atsumu wants to say so much, yet he fears breaking the fragile peace that has settled between them. His heart races. Pounds incredibly hard in his chest. His breath catches in his throat. It's been too long since they were this close. It's been too long since they last met. Do you mind? Kayumi asks in a murmur, extending his arm and waiting for Atsumu to reach out his own. It takes Atsumu a few seconds, wondering if his brain is still intact. Then Kayumi positions himself between Atsumu's legs and Atsumu's heart drops. He starts treating his wounds, his touch gentle but firm. Atsumu missed this, missed him, missed the touch of his fingers on his skin. It's soft, tender, it makes Atsumu's heart go wild. He can feel his body heat up. Atsumu pulls his bottom lip between his teeth and avoids Kayumi's eyes, trying to pull himself together and stop his body from shaking. It almost feels like it's too much. Kayumi unwraps the bandage on Atsumu's arm and disinfects the wound. Silence stretches, the only sounds being the occasional hiss of pain escaping Atsumu's lips and the distant hum of the TV. Atsumu narrows his eyes in pain, grimacing as he watches Kayumi do the work. You've been through hell. Kayumi breaks the silence, his voice low and measured. He wraps a fresh bandage around the cleaned up wound. Atsumu gulps. He can't meet his gaze, staring at his hands instead. Guess it's been quite a trip. Kayumi's eyes narrow slightly as if searching for something in Atsumu's words. You could have died, he says. 
his tone laced with concern and frustration. You almost died just now. Yeah, he heard it before. Right, if Suna hadn't been there, Atsumu wouldn't have made it to Tokyo. If Kiyumi hadn't been there, he would never be able to see Osamu ever again. Atsumu winces, not just from the pain of his wounds but from the truth in Kiyumi's words. I know, he mumbles, unable to conjure a better response. Why did you come here? Kiyumi asks. His gaze is intense. You could have gone anywhere, but here. Atsumu hesitates, grappling with the complexity of his emotions. I don't know, he admits, voice barely above a whisper. Do you hate me? He trembles. Kiyumi puts the bandages aside and slides his hands to Atsumu's thighs as if soothing him. He sighs, his fingers pausing in their work. Atsumu meets Kiyumi's eyes and there it is again. That sliver of hunter green. Those hot coals. Those desperate and hungry eyes. Atsumu's heart throbs. On instinct, his hands move to Kiyumi's arms. Fingers gripping his skin as he stares up at him. Is he still allowed to do that? Touching him, the air is charged with unspoken emotions. A volatile mix that neither of them fully comprehends. There's a need for connection. A yearning that goes beyond words. Atsumu can't fathom the intensity of his feelings. And yet, Kiyumi's touch feels hot against his skin. Undeniably right. His heart is racing. Pounding like a drum in his chest. And Atsumu wonders if he's going crazy. Maybe he is. Kiyumi will always drive him nuts. I need to check the wound on your... Kiyumi starts, but Atsumu beats him to it, interrupts him with a sudden urgency, blurting out, why did you save me, it's been gnawing at his mind ever since he found out where he was, he doesn't know why he's asking this now, but it was the perfect chance for Kiyumi to get rid of him once and for all, Kiyumi's touch feels grounding, and for a moment, Atsumu loses himself in the warmth of their connection, Kiyumi gulps, Caught off guard by the abruptness of the question, he doesn't answer immediately, leaving Atsumu hanging in the tense silence. Atsumu can't tear his gaze away from him, his golden eyes searching for answers. He doesn't get it. Back then too, Kiyumi could have shot him. Atsumu even put the barrel to his forehead and still, Kiyumi pulled back. It makes no sense. Atsumu just doesn't get it. You're pushing your luck. Kiyumi says instead, warns, a hint of caution in his voice, but Atsumu huffs, his impulsive nature taking over, I'm lucky, Kiyumi's expression tightens, and he responds with a hint of frustration, you shouldn't take your chances, what do you care, Atsumu wonders out loud, unable to suppress the bitterness in his tone, after all, Kiyumi needs him dead, it's their fate, written in blood and destiny, Kiyumi scoffs lightly, repeating Atsumu's words in a mumble, what do I care, he furrows his brows, shaking his head in mild disbelief, then, as if guided by an unseen force, he cups Atsumu's cheek, fingers tenderly brushing against his skin, and he stares deeply into his golden eyes, Atsumu feels like he might melt under the intensity of Kiyumi's gaze, it's everything and nothing, it's all he wants and still not enough, why did their paths ever cross, why did it have to be Kiyumi, how could I not care, he whispers, his lips too close, Atsumu's body ignites, a flush of heat spreading across his cheeks, his mind is a chaotic mess, the proximity of Kiyumi overwhelming him in ways he can't comprehend, at that moment, with the air heavy with unspoken confessions, Atsumu is suspended between the past and the present, torn between the destiny that awaits them and the undeniable pull that keeps drawing them together, they shouldn't, whatever this is, they shouldn't, but Kiyumi is the last person Atsumu could ever deny, don't you hate me, Atsumu asks softly, his gaze fixed on Kiyumi's onyx eyes, the vulnerability in his question hangs in the air, a raw admission of his fears and insecurities, hate, Kiyumi wonders, I've felt many things for you, he says, his voice a low murmur as he brushes his lips across Atsumu's, the touch is gentle, and Atsumu can't help but close his eyes, his mouth slightly agape, overwhelmed by the flood of conflicting emotions, Kiyumi whispers, his warm breath grazing Atsumu's lips, but hating you was and will never be one of them, you have every right to, but I don't care, Kiyumi responds, his fingers tracing delicate patterns on Atsumu's skin, shivers run through Atsumu as he marvels at the proximity of Kiyumi, that man has an uncanny ability to cloud his mind, to make him feel hazy and intoxicated with every touch, Atsumu furrows his brow, slowly opening his eyes to meet Kiyumi's gaze, he shudders, I didn't want this, he says in hushed tones, his voice carrying the weight of regret and longing, I know, Kiyumi whispers and it feels like he means it, I'm so, Atsumu starts, his words a desperate plea, but Kiyumi silences him with a kiss, a kiss that makes up for all the time they couldn't, the touch is fervent, a mingling of apologies and desires, at that moment, everything fades away, leaving only the sensation of their lips meeting, the warmth of their connection, and the undeniable pull that keeps drawing them together against all odds, if all this between them is supposed to be so wrong, why does this feel so damn right, it's not fair, I didn't want this, Atsumu repeats out of breath this time, 
leaning his forehead against Kiyumi's, slowly opening his eyes slightly to stare at his lips. They are pretty, beautiful. His heart beats so hard that it hurts. Guilt gnaws at the back of his mind. Atsumu's vision gets blurry. He never wanted to hurt him, not Kiyumi. Kiyumi nudges Atsumu's nose and inhales deeply. His eyes are still closed. His long eyelashes tickle Atsumu's skin. He grazes his upper lip against Atsumu's, and it takes everything Atsumu has to pull himself together. His fingers twitch. His body trembles. He closes his eyes to prevent himself from letting any tears fall. I believe you. Kiyumi whispers. The sincerity in his voice resonates through Atsumu. It's not fair. He pulls back slightly to meet Kiyumi's gaze. His eyes sting. The intensity of his feelings for Kiyumi threatening to swallow him whole. Before he can find the right words, Atsumu starts again. Kiyumi. I. His voice dies down. Nothing could make up for what happened between them. Nothing at all. But then Kiyumi brings their lips back together and Atsumu fists a hand in Kiyumi's curls. And everything comes so easy. In response, Kiyumi presses Atsumu closer. Pulls him in like no amount of proximity will ever be enough. Like a hunger that can't be sated. Like something in Kiyumi just broke. It's hard for Atsumu to read him. But he looks so hurt. Tormented by his own feelings. That it tears a hole in Atsumu's chest. Do things look the same inside him as they do within Atsumu? Is he just as confused and overwhelmed? Is it possible that he has missed him? Even just a little? Atsumu is sorry. Fuck. He is so. So sorry. NSFW content starts here. Please read the rest on AO3 if you want to. Thank you.